Yachts for Sale YouTube channel opening a window into the world of yacht brokerage and today I'm going to tell you about three yachts that are perfect to start you in your yacht owning career, another YouTube channel that you just have to check out and I'm going to answer some of your questions. Well, as you can see, today I'm at the Fort Lauderdale office of Northrop & Johnson, but actually a number of my colleagues and industry professionals are in Germany at the Dusseldorf Boat Show, which is the largest indoor boat show in the world. Probably the biggest noise at this boat show has been made by Sunseeker, who have chosen Dusseldorf to unveil a new model called the Superhawk 55. Now, it seems that a common thread amongst super yacht owners is that their first yacht was in fact a Sunseeker Superhawk. As far back as the 1990s, Sunseeker was building a Superhawk 34, and they also had a Sunseeker Superhawk 43. These were, and in fact still are, great first boats to buy. They're good sizes for the owner operator, and I have to say that they are both sexy looking yachts even today. As a matter of fact, the Superhawk 34 was used in the Bond film, The World Is Not Enough. You may remember the scene on the Thames River when the actress Maria Grazia Cucinotta is on the boat, pulls out a missile launcher and blows up the MI5 building. Of course, nobody goes to the cinema anymore because everybody just watches YouTube, usually Aquaholic. And in fact, Aquaholic on his channel made a fantastic series following somebody who restored an old 34 Superhawk. And when you look at the finished result, Quite honestly, Sunseeker could easily start to sell them again exactly as per the original design. But they're not. They have a new design for a bigger Superhawk, the 55. And this too is a great starter yacht for future super yacht owners. Sunseeker are well aware that this needs to be a fast and an agile yacht. So they fit it around with Volvo IPS drives which again is fantastic for a first time buyer because they have a very easy to use joystick control and the IPS drives will be 950 units. To put this in context, you may remember that in last week's vlog we were talking about Arcadia yachts who also use Volvo IPS quite extensively. Now their 60 foot model has IPS 600s and the 96 has IPS 1200s, so 950s on a 55 foot open sports boat, it's pretty punchy. And in fact, the Superhawk 55 will reach 38 knots of speed. I'm sure that now the yacht's been unveiled, there will be plenty of reviews. I'm pretty sure that Nick from Aquaholic is at Dusseldorf too, so you can expect a full walkthrough from him. But in the meantime, here is a layout of the yacht, showing it to have a two cabin layout with a galley and a lounge area in between those two cabins. Also at the Dusseldorf show, Arkson yachts will be on display. You may remember that last year I visited Arkson in the United Kingdom to show you two Arkson 85s that are in construction. Now, since I was there filming, they've come on leaps and bounds with the development of two smaller models. And I believe that at Dusseldorf, they will have a 28 and a 30 on display. I must say though, that the model that first caught my attention when I was looking for a boat for myself was the Arxon 45. This is a pretty incredible boat. On the one hand, you can get speeds in excess of 50 knots out of her. And on the other hand, she also has a range of over 500 nautical miles. I have to say that my personal dream of yacht owning is more about traveling around the British Isles, up through Norway, and then maybe a summer in Croatia, rather than lounging around under the sun in the south of France. So this ticks a lot of boxes for me. Well, once the Dusseldorf boat show is over, I'm looking forward to making a call to Dominic Byrne from Arxon to arrange to go back there to show you updates on the Arxon 85. And that's something that will be published over on the Yacht Builders channel. While I'm here in the States though, I'm hopeful to be able to cover a very famous American builder too. And also interestingly, another builder that has had many, many boat owners who go on to become super owners in the future. I'm talking of course about Intrepid. This brand is so successful that when people describe center console boats, they'll often call it an Intrepid, even if it's actually another brand. 
Intrepid was recently purchased by Marine Max, who also own Northrop and Johnson, by the way. And they've left Ken Clinton firmly in control as the president of the company. Ken is not only an astonishing boat builder, but I respect him enormously for his use of social media too. He is constantly recording videos for LinkedIn. He has an incredible Instagram account with over 200,000 followers, which is called Ken the Boat Builder. And he had the amazing foresight to use the Intrepid Powerboat's YouTube channel to upload regular newsletters and also all of their owner's manuals. Now, I particularly liked the owner's manual idea because you can take your aspirations of owning an Intrepid to a whole new level by learning how to use the boat before you even put your money down. I'm also looking forward to visiting the shipyard and also plan to publish a live stream with Ken so that you can ask him any questions that you're interested in. So watch out for that soon. I'm just waiting for the final confirmation from the shipyard on the dates. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I published a vlog about Tankoa yachts and particularly the incredible water features that one of their models has. And in that video, I said basically that if you're interested in buying a yacht, do contact me if you're a qualified buyer. I went on to explain a little bit what a qualified buyer is, but that raised quite a few questions and comments from viewers. Here are a few of them. Lino Andrade, he says, Hi David, Lino here from Ontario, Canada. Just loved your video on water features everywhere on this yacht. Are you able to do a deep dive into your qualification process of when buying a yacht from you, such as credentials you ask for, proof of income or assets, trusts, LLCs, etc.? Casper, I've talked to yacht brokers even decades ago in Seattle, and a large percentage of the prospective buyers wanted to engage in the fantasy of bovine scatology, or BS for short. For this very reason, the second conversation is always a formal and verifiable letter of financial ability from a reputable banking institution, period. A Google check would be a good but quick alternative. I can't imagine what the field is like now in a world of scandalous untruth and outrageous duplicity. Well, those are very valid comments that you make. Uh, to be honest, Google is a very, very good source of information. Whenever I get an inquiry, um, I Google the person. To be honest, it's very helpful if the person inquiring uses their business email account rather than some vague Gmail account, because then I can put the person with the business and get a general overview of who they are. Um, if they're the CEO of a large company that's a profitable company, it's highly unlikely they'll be wasting my time or theirs uh, on an inquiry. The difficulty comes when you just can't find people on Google anywhere and I've sold yachts for people who are practically invisible online and yet I know that they've sold their business for over a hundred million dollars but they just want to fly under the radar. Those people I simply ask them for some sort of indication of their wealth and to be honest when they're qualified buyers they're expecting the question. They have bought already a 20 million dollar pad in Palm Beach, they have probably um, got a private jet and so it's very easy for them to give a personal wealth statement from their bank. They're used to it. Uh, occasionally I get some people inquiring and they get very offended by the uh, question. One person said to me, I could buy that boat 20 times over. I could buy you, your company. And when they take offense, I'm pretty sure at that point that they're just having a laugh and they're trying to uh, BS me just to have a flight of fantasy. Real wealthy people are accustomed to the question. They have the answer pretty quickly. Um, there was another comment on this which made a very good um, observation. This is from Fish Tiger. And by the way, Fish Tiger, thanks for watching, thanks for all your comments. Um, I'm pretty sure from a lot of your comments you've either worked on a yacht or you're involved in the yachting industry. You certainly seem to, to know what you're talking about. And I really appreciated this comment. You said, time wasters. We were selling a 65 meter in Antibes. A broker called to say that a prospective owner would like to come and have a quick look. Waiting at the IYC for him to arrive, this crappy old Ford 4x4 arrived with a guy in muddy green wellies who got out with an equally muddy gun dog. The skipper went to meet him and the broker. Kicking off his boots, he had a good look around and was pretty knowledgeable. Not having high hopes of a sale, he left. Speaking to Peter Insel, the broker, we asked who the heck he was. Found out that he owned the largest private mobile phone company in the United States. You just can't judge a book by its cover sometimes. What a great observation and so true. I worked for quite a few years at the CRN shipyard in Ancona, Italy. And um, the interesting thing in Ancona is it has an airport, 
but there's very few flights, or at least back in the day, there were very few flights that went there. So owners of the yachts tended to come either by private jet or by EasyJet, which is one of the most economic airlines in the world. One particular um, client that we had, who I'm still in contact with and, and socialize with quite often, he used to joke with me and say, I'm flying in in my orange private jet, because orange, of course, is the color of EasyJets. So it was quite interesting to see the difference in, in people who could easily afford an, uh, a private jet, but would just rather not spend that money for whatever reasons. And I think one of the real definitions of luxury is that you can do what you like and not worry about what other people think. If you want to go by EasyJet, you go by EasyJet. Conversely, there was one particular buyer that flew in quite often. He'd sold his business, I think, for something like 350 million pounds. He was a British guy. And the business that he sold was a household name in the UK. He always came by private jet. But I remember he used to come in flip-flops, an old pair of jeans and a stained t-shirt. That was just his style. That was how he felt comfortable. And the real luxury is to be able to, to do that and not care what people think. So you're so right. You can't judge a book by the cover, but a good yacht broker will do a little bit of research to make sure that they're not wasting their time. And as I mentioned in the last um, vlog, it's not just about not wasting your time. It's also about not wasting the time of the seller because to bring somebody to, to see a yacht, then who makes an offer on it, who then doesn't have the financial means to back up the offer, can end up wasting the seller's time. And if he's engaged a lawyer, which they often do at a very early point, you can easily waste 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars of the seller's money. And although they're wealthy enough to be able to take that hit, um, as a yacht broker, you have a sense of responsibility to not to waste the time and the money of the seller. Bit of a long-winded answer, but I think it merited it. There was one other question that I wanted to answer as well, and that was from CDB. And I've printed these out so small because I've copied and pasted from the uh, YouTube channel that you'll have to excuse me for squinting. CDB says, I love this type of content. Now he watched a very old um, video that I did, why charter a super yacht when you can afford to buy one. Great video, I'll put a link to it somewhere on the screen there or there. He said, I love this kind of content. Um, interacting with viewer comments is a good format for videos. I have a question. What price range per week is the most sought after for charter? I see some of the super yachts charter for half a million dollars to a million dollars per week. I have to think that's the exception rather than the rule. What would you say is the sweet spot for yacht chartering? What a great question. It's true um, that yachts will go for a million dollars a week. In fact, I think if my memory serves me, Octopus is actually $2 million a week. And I wouldn't say that's the exception in as much as those yachts don't seem to have too much trouble in finding bookings. They're very, very popular. There's a big demand for very, very large yachts. Um, if I had unlimited funds, I don't think perhaps that's the way I would go though. I, I remember talking to a very successful charter manager who chartered um, a huge yacht for one of the richest men in the world. And the feedback from that individual was that it was a mistake, it was too big. They said it was like being in a massive office block all on your own. And they were wandering around, didn't really get the best use out of the yacht. Having spent a lot of time on a lot of yachts, I find that between 100 and 150,000 a week will get you everything you could ever want. You can have a lovely yacht in a 35 meter range. Of course, it depends on how new or how old it is. Um, you really don't need to spend half a million to a million. I mean, you can, I would certainly not stop you from doing that but with considerably less. I would say that is the sweet spot, 100 to 150,000 per week. Again, as has been said many times in many videos, a lot of it's about the crew. If you have a great crew and the yacht is not that good, you can still have a wonderful time. If you're on the biggest yacht in the world and the crew you just don't get on with, you'll just feel like you've wasted your money. So one of the big jobs for charter brokers is to be able to be sure that the crew as well as the yacht will fit you your expectations and give you a great time whether you're spending a hundred thousand or 150,000. well we've hit 2023 running with some great content already filmed and in production i've told you as well that we're hoping to go back to arcs and film there very soon we'll be filming hopefully at intrepid 2 showing you that over on the yacht builders channel but a lot of the yachts that i'll be filming on this trip to the usa uh, will be charter yachts and this gives me the opportunity to remind you that we now have not just 
a Yacht Builders channel and a Yachts for Sale channel, but a Yachts for Charter channel too, a whole suite of yachting channel. And those charter videos are getting better and better and better. So to conclude, I can just remind you to subscribe basically to all of that great suite of channels. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, don't smash the like button. It's such a vulgar thing to do. Stretch up over there and gently click it. <laughs>